After dropping many of the country's most significant COVID-19 restrictions, things seem to be looking up for civil rights in Ireland. But make no mistake about it, this issue is not settled until the last restriction is gone. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Now, don't get me wrong, it's clearly great to see draconian restrictions like the domestic cert policy behind us with more lifting of restrictions supposedly on the way. It's no doubt a cause for celebration and a big win for civil rights. So I'm not about to start complaining and being negative even after something good happens. After all, if I wanted to moan for a living, I'd become a people before profit TD. But before we all kick back and relax, there is still some unfinished business to attend to. First of all, we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that these restrictions could never come back. As the Taoiseach himself said during his national address, It is important also to say that I can't promise you there won't be further twists in this pandemic requiring different decisions in the future. We know there are more variants coming, that's a fact of life. And though Omicron seemed from the beginning to be the mildest strain yet, the authorities absolutely defecated their jocks over it for months. So it's not a stretch to imagine that some mild Omega or Tau variant could pop up and cause governments like our own to have a fear-induced brain aneurysm once again. As they say, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior, and we know well what the government have been like. Moreover, we have bizarre statements coming from the Taoiseach like the following last week. Up to this point, Mr. Martin said he did not want key figures in pandemic response being pulled out of the front line to be inside in some room going through presentations presentations as part of a review. I don't want people during the next pandemic saying there's an inquiry coming and take a conservative approach, he said. It was natural that mistakes would be made during a pandemic, but he was satisfied that decision makers had always acted in the public interest. Now, that's a little bit cryptic, but it seems like the Taoiseach is saying we should be careful not to be too harsh in our COVID inquiry because if the ringleaders are found to be in the wrong and punished, the government will be wary to use those restrictions in future pandemics. In other words, don't hold us too accountable this time in case we want to exceed our powers again later. This does not bode well for the future and is the last thing that we should want to hear from the leader of the country. Now that this precedent has been set, they're almost keeping restrictions ready to go in the holster to be pulled out again at a moment's notice. Far from giving us back our constitutional rights, it seems they've merely been loaned to us. The emergency legislation is still in place and it can all come back overnight just like it was lifted overnight. So what is the solution? Well, there are three things that need to happen now. Firstly, all COVID legislation needs to be rolled back and repealed entirely. Society was promised that if the vast majority of people took the vaccine, that will be enough to bring back normality. Not the so-called new normal, not a different normal, just normal. The vast majority of people complied, for better or for worse, and now the government needs to hold up its end of the bargain. We've spent tens of billions of euros on this pandemic, we're in our third year of dealing with this, the variants are getting milder, and almost everyone is immunized through vaccines or prior infection. It's over. We need to return to nothing less than total 2019 normality. If even one piece of legislation remains on the books, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, it is continuing this utter farce. It's time to scrap everything. The second thing we need to do is put systems in place to ensure this can never happen again. Of course, the government may need emergency powers in the future, during a war or some other disaster, that's fine. But they should never, under any circumstances, have the power to, for example, ban religious services. That is something which is explicitly forbidden by the constitution and which should never have been allowed. I honestly don't care if there was a zombie apocalypse and half the population had turned into flesh-eating radioactive ghouls. There are certain things that the state has no jurisdiction over under any circumstances and many lines were crossed in the past two years. This might mean reforming our court system, it might mean a referendum. I'm no legal expert and people smarter and more knowledgeable than myself will no doubt look into these matters. But once the legislation is gone, we need to ensure that it is dead and buried for good. And thirdly, the final thing we need to do is illegally and electorally hold the people behind all this responsible. After this is all said and done, in the next few years, the economy will start to crack from the damage it sustained. Taxes will skyrocket, missed cancers will start to materialize, and businesses will start shutting down across the country. 
And when that happens, there are going to be countless people in politics, in the media, in Nefit and other advisory bodies who want to memory hold the entire thing and act like they had nothing to do with it. Everyone in official Ireland will start to scatter. Take someone like Senator Jerry Horkin, for example, who said unvaccinated people should be banned from supermarkets, unable to even buy food unless they take a vaccine that they don't want and may not need. Not only was he fine with restrictions, he wanted them to be kicked into overdrive in the most draconian and shocking manner imaginable. But after his government lifts the restrictions, what does he say? Great news after so long, most COVID restrictions to be lifted. Is that great news, Senator? Because just a couple of months ago, you thought restrictions were brilliant and you couldn't get enough of them. But now suddenly you're on the side of people who want their freedom back? Or take Sinn Féin, who spent the entire pandemic bragging about how much they had supported the government's COVID response. The support that you have got and your government has got from the opposition, by and large, in relation to responding to uh, COVID has been quite remarkable. The opposition in this state and in this house over the course of the last year and a bit has been very supportive of public health measures. Uh, and I would say to the government that they have been the envy of many countries in Europe. There are many such people and groups who probably think that we'll all just forget the role they played in these events. That we'll forget the destroyed businesses and livelihoods and the disruption to our funerals and weddings and baptism, the demonization and discrimination against people on medical grounds, the missed cancers and young people who have lost years of their social life and education which they will never get back, people who couldn't hold their dying loved ones or expecting couples who were separated in the hospital just when the pregnant woman needed her man the most. Many in official Ireland think people will forget about all of this and that they'll never be asked to answer for what's happened. Well, I can tell you one thing, I sure as hell won't forget, and I'm sure many of you won't forget either. So there is a lot that needs to happen in this country and changes that need to be made. But for now, let's enjoy the little bit of freedom we have for the time being. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, as they say. Now, before you go, we're not ones to brag here on this channel, but it's worth noting that with a few exceptions, Gripped has been one of the only truly independent outlets during the pandemic, which has asked questions that needed to be asked urgently. Unlike other media outlets, we do not receive so much as one red cent from the government, and so we are free to criticize them as needed. It's part of why we're almost never allowed into press conferences, because we ask the hard questions that others simply won't. So with that said, if we have been a voice for you during these trying times and you enjoy the work that we do, please consider signing up for a monthly donation of even 5 or 10 euro per month, whatever you can afford. The likes of RTE have hundreds of millions of euros in the license fee payments. We don't. We have you and people like you chipping in a few bob every month. And that's how we maintain our independence. So if you want another explosive year of hard hitting analysis that holds the establishment to account, please check out the link on screen to help fund real journalism. As always, thanks for watching.